All right. Hey, everyone. I am here with George Grombacher. Hey, George. Well, hey, Jen. How's it going? Great. How are you? Awesome. And George has a podcast called Money Savage, which I was on. A, that was a few weeks ago now, right? Yeah. Time flies, yeah. but I think so. I know, but we got to talking and you are a financial planner by day, podcaster by night. Yes. Yeah. Financial planner by day, podcaster by morning. Normally, <laughs> by <but> morning. <laughs> <laughs> very early in the morning, but yes, yes, you are. You are absolutely correct. I never heard of a superhero starting in the, the very early morning, but it, it's yeah. good time. I get I'm it. a modern day superhero with a four and a one-year-old. So it requires <laughs> early morning stuff. So really early. I'm sure. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> and Interestingly enough, George, I don't know if you know this, but um, we bought another agent. My partner and I bought another agent's business. He retired. So we just bought that last week. Which oh, congratulations. Exciting. Yeah. And that I think is really good. It's been after we talked, it's really been getting us thinking like, what is our retirement plan? Because as agents, we don't, it's not like we have like a company 401k or anything like that. So can you help us? And, and give us some tips on retirement as agents. Yeah, for sure. I think that that's, that's how, how incredibly timely that you just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm super curious because I don't know very much about how succession planning works in, in real estate. I know in the financial planning world, um, and that's, that's a big topic too. If it's an insurance <laughs> book of business that has renewals, that's pretty valuable. If it's right. buying somebody with assets under management, so there's recurring revenue. But even then, um, the different multiples that you can potentially get, I don't think are ever quite as big as somebody would want. But what is, what is a, a real estate? What, what, that, well, that, for that most that realtors, post- like what happens when they want, like most realtors will do real estate until like they die. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because you can't, I mean, you technically can, but I think a lot more agents are making their business an actual business instead of just having a hobby of selling real estate. And so when you do make it an actual business, then your book of business, your clients are, is what you're selling because there's no like other assets. Right. Um, So it really depends. I mean, for this agent, um, Jim Basquet was his name. He had actually retired a year ago. And he was just, if people called him, he'd be like, well, I have somebody I could refer you to. And we were like, no, 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 no. Let's like make you more money, you know? And like, cause it is a good way to sell your business and retire and have income for over a few years. You know, you can structure it however you want. Like a certain percentage of deals at the first year, second, second year, maybe a smaller percentage. It depends on how involved they want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think that that's I think that that's super exciting, and you know, from my perspective, the 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 right way to be thinking about it from yeah. for for you and and for other agents. Um, I remember somebody told me years ago. So I've been I started my career in two thousand and one. It was my mm-hmm. first job out of college, and I nice. started with 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 New York Life. And so I I kind of grew up in the life insurance business, and then now this is I think this is actually my twentieth year, or two thousand and twenty one will be. Um, and now I do a lot well, more. Well, happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I should have some kind of a party or create like a banner or something. A Zoom party. Yeah, okay, right. Well, hopefully <laughs> at some point next year, we, we, we can actually do it in person. Good point, good point. Um, now, now my business is, is a lot more retirement plan focused. But what's what the important part of that story is that I remember somebody years and years ago presented to my office and they said, stop treating your business like a toy. Yeah, and I thought, what a what a great phrase that is, and yeah. and yeah, and, and, and do I do this full time? Is is this my career? Yes, but do I treat a lot of it like a toy, and do I not approach it enough mm-hmm. like a business? Then then the answer to that question was was definitively yes. Yes. And I spent years doing sales or um, recruitment and development for New York Life and then Mass Mutual, um, and so I think that I can put myself in your shoes as you're working with agents. Um, just helping them to develop their business because it's it's a lot. It's a lot mm-hmm. to just be successfully making money and doing what you're doing. But then, well, you how make do I... different decisions too. If you're saying, okay, my succession plan is I'm going to be in this business for 10, 20 years, but then after that, I either, you know, like we said, most agents just stop, which seems silly. You spent all this time building it. I feel like you should get something else out of it besides 
the lifestyle that you led for those 20 years. But if you're going to make it a business and sell it, then you're entering in data differently or you're having conversations with clients a little bit differently, things like that. Yeah, I think everything. Uh, mm -hmm. One hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's. I think that that's really well said. So uh, we're going to talk specifically about different retirement plans, but I think just the idea yeah. is how do you become the CFO of 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 your life and really your own business because mm -hmm. you're doing so many different things, right? Mm -hmm. You're the prospector, right. you're the actual salesperson, you're the admin a lot of the time, and everything else. But Marketing, yeah. <laughs> you know, all we wear all these different hats, and then you're right. at home and you're your mom or dad and husband and wife or brother or whatever. Um, but I, I think that if you can just get in the habit of, of, of number one, making that mindset shift, that, that's probably, probably the biggest thing mm -hmm. um, and approaching it more professionally and, and stop treating it like a toy. That's probably the first step. And, yeah. and then it's a matter of, well, why would I want to do this? Well, to your point, it's you've spent a lifetime building up, goodwill and now you've got this great reputation in town where people are actually coming to you and asking for help mm -hmm. well why wouldn't you want to leverage that to your point and make some additional money uh, but then also how do you position yourself so that you're able to walk away from it totally one day uh, right to, to and with money or like have exactly. yeah have your retirement in place even if it's outside of selling the business of course like your actual retirement money yeah. you got it uh, and, and for the most part, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm agnostic if, if an agent wants to simply develop a real estate portfolio of rentals or whatever, do that. Or if it's you said stamp, you're agnostic, it, that's I, a funny way to, it's, it, it's a stamp collection or it's, it's Pokemon, <laughs> yeah. or if it is, if it is a traditional 401k plan, that doesn't necessarily matter to me. What matters to me is that people position themselves for long-term success and they just start taking the actions today, even though it might seem really, really small because mm -hmm. those actions that you take today are going to have a huge impact in the future. Um, and, and I really am agnostic. I, to a degree, it makes me nervous whenever I talk to real estate folks and all that they want to talk about is self-directed IRAs or right. whatever, because they only want to invest in real estate. Well, I've been around for long enough that I remember, you know, housing crashes and I live in Arizona and we had oh my gosh, this yeah. amazing, amazing bubble, right? And everybody yeah. was rich, rich. And then the bottom literally fell out. And what happens, mm -hmm. and I saw it happen a bunch of times, you have somebody, an agent who's making a million dollars a year selling homes and they have this huge portfolio of rentals, but then all of a sudden they lose their income. Right. And then maybe, and in a lot of cases, they lose all their assets as well because they have to sell. Yeah, because when I got into real estate in 2008, we were um, doing short sales and we were short selling a lot of real estate agents' portfolios. So yeah, diversifying is good. I do, I do agree. I think it's important for real estate agents to invest in real estate <laughs> sure. and also diversify their portfolio. Yeah, that's one of those things. It's like, it's possible in today's world to have nuance, right? It's yes. not totally one or the other. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, so perhaps if, 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 you'll, uh, if, if you'll indulge me a bit, I just want to yeah. really give people sort of that, 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 the, the framework to be thinking about from an overall financial situation, and then we'll yeah. talk specifically about some of the tactics. Okay. Um, I think that if anything has been learned or taught by COVID in 2020, it's that it's crappy. But then number two, we really need to increase our resilience and that's yes. physically get stronger, but then also mentally get stronger and financially get stronger too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want everybody listening to become wildly financially successful. Yes. But the only way that we ever move to financial abundance and success is to first have financial security. Mm -hmm. And I know way too many people that are in financial services and probably real estate that are really living sale to sale. Yeah. Um, which is living paycheck to paycheck, which essentially means you're broke. Right. And if that's you right now, fine, fine. But let's, let's start thinking about it a little bit differently like we've been talking about, but also start putting some things in place so that we're not in this position forever because right. you probably know a lot of people who have always been in that position and unless mm -hmm. they change, we'll always be in that position. Yeah, exactly. And from a, financial, um, from a financial security standpoint, the first thing I want everybody to do is to make sure they have at least $1,000 saved up. And that's, different that's like than, some Dave Ramsey basic. 
Yeah. Yeah. And Dave, Dave is Uncle Dave is the best. I mean, there's a reason that he's <laughs> a thousand doesn't really seem like enough, but like, okay, well, we'll go with it. It's totally not. Yeah. But but, it, but it's enough to cover um, if, if if your car breaks down normally, right? It covers yeah. minor emergencies. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about just moving from paycheck to paycheck, deal to deal to, okay, now I actually have a thousand bucks saved up. That's just number one. Right. And then it's a matter of, okay, let me start to pay myself first. We talked mm-hmm. about diversification. Paying yourself first simply means that, you're, you, that you pay yourself before you pay everybody else. Right. Because if you're in the business of paying everybody else before you pay yourself, you're going to get to the end of the month, there's not going to be any money left over. That's right. how it always goes. We exactly. all know that. Yeah. So that's where I think setting up uh, some kind of a qualified account or mm-hmm. a brokerage account, mm-hmm. and you can just put it in cash, but start putting money in there on a consistent basis. Um, even like the smallest amount. Do you specific, amount. do you specifically work with only certain companies or how do you work? Um, well, I, I am. So the way that, that my business is set up is I own uh, my own financial firm. It's okay. called a register, a register investment advisor or an RIA. Mm-hmm. And so I, I am again using that 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 word agnostic, yeah. As it applies to a financial company, it doesn't matter to me if somebody wants to use Vanguard or Fidelity or or Robinhood or XYZ financial company or investment. It doesn't uh-huh. matter. It's it's, okay. it's irrelevant to me. Okay. Um, and there's so many good ones out there these days. I think that one of the great things that the technology has done is really leveled the field and yeah, brought for professional sure. money management to all of us at a pretty low cost. So anyway, thousand bucks, start paying yourself and, and mm-hmm. I'll get into specifics on that. But then I really want you to get to one month's worth of expenses saved up. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for us to know our facts and it's hard for us to know our income, but you usually know what your outflows are, what your right. monthly nut is. Get to one month saved up. Once you have that, so if it's five thousand dollars, you have five thousand dollars in the bank, which is a lot more meaningful than a thousand bucks. Right. Then it's let's get rid of credit card debt. Yep. Because that's crushing you. Yes. I don't know what real estate's going to return this year. I don't know what the finance, what stock market's going to do. Probably not going to do twenty percent consistently, and that's probably what your credit cards are, are charging you, if not mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. So wipe out those. Put a plan mm-hmm. together. It's more Dave Ramsey stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it's get to two months worth then three months worth of expenses, four months, five months, do it till you get to six months. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's great. That, that's, yeah. that's a lot of money, right? Yeah. yeah. It's 30,000 in this case, if your expenses are 5,000. Not, it's, it's a lot of money. Uh, but, but your debt's paid off that. at this point, 30,000 in the bank. Okay. And now, now, now you're financially secure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, this, this year has shown us that that might not be enough. But normally, normally six months in the bank is money where you can say F you to, to whatever, walk away from a job that you don't like. You can yeah. start a new business. You just have that security. Right. And that's when I want you to really start aggressively saving money. So that's going out and buying rentals. That's funding a solo 401k. It's a SEP IRA. It's a mm-hmm. simple IRA. It's all those things. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think that you should be doing any of those things, which is super boring until you have that financial security. Yeah. So, it's great advice. But when you do, I know that like in, like in our company, so we have like a real estate company that does the buying and selling. And we have um, like a couple of different ones that hold residential property. And so we can open up IRAs or I don't, I guess like, yeah, IRAs in each of those too. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So let me just tack, get in sort of the tactical things that you can mm-hmm. do. So when we're talking about traditional uh, retirement planning. We're talking about things called qualified accounts. Okay. Qualified just means that these are accounts that receive special tax treatment from the government. Mm-hmm. The government wants us to save money so that they're not totally responsible for us when we are old and we can't work anymore. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. And so they right. incentivize us along the way through different tax breaks. Okay. So, you can think about, um, think about retirement savings where there's three different times that you can potentially get a tax break. You can get um, a tax break on the money when you put the money into the account. Okay. And so l- 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 let me take a step back. Examples of qualified accounts are IRAs or individual retirement accounts, mm-hmm. Roth IRAs, um, SEP IRAs, mm-hmm. simple, simple, um, simple retirement accounts, S-I-M-P-L-E, um, and this is why you need a financial advisor. <laughs> yeah, well, totally. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's not right. try to do this on our own. <laughs> Got and, it. And, 
And then a 401k, which can also be known as a solo 401k or a self-directed okay. 401k. So those are, those are and 403b, if, if you work at a nonprofit, a pension plan, uh, 403b is sometimes for school teachers as well. Okay. Uh, 457 plans. There's all these different, these are just falling. I mean, really, buddy, everybody's situation is different. And so that's why we need somebody to like you to kind of go over the whole picture to see what's really the best. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. that there's, I think that there is, I think that that is, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head right there. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can go on Google right now or to any of these websites and learn all about the ins and the outs of how IRAs work or a 401k works. Uh, but it's just a matter of how does it all sort of fit together. Right. Exactly. So, um, so it's, it's going back to that. You can get a tax break on the money when it goes in. You mm -hmm. almost always get a tax break on the money as it's inside the account and it's growing. Okay. And then when you take the money out, how is the money going to be taxed? So those are really at the front end. I, I can get a tax break this year. Mm -hmm. The contributions that I make reduce my taxable income. So if you're having to come out of pocket and write checks to the government every year, maybe that's really attractive. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you do that, when you make a tax deductible contribution or a pre-tax contribution, mm -hmm. that means all the money that you take out at age 65 or whenever, right. that means that's all going to be taxed. Okay. So that's when people just need to like talk to you or whoever their financial advisor is and say, okay, what do we think income is going to be? Which one's going to be more? Cause that'll depend on the tax, what the tax is, right? Your yeah, tax bracket. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. That, that's, that, that's exactly right. So the, 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 the opposite way to that is, is, is the Roth style contribution. Okay. But right? people probably heard of Roth IRAs. Mm -hmm. It just means instead of getting a tax break this year, it's after tax. So let's, let's just re, let's just use round numbers. Let's say okay. that I make 50, I make fifty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I put I put five thousand dollars into my traditional IRA pre tax, mm -hmm. that reduces my taxable income to forty five thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. So this year in twenty twenty, I pay tax on a smaller amount of money, which is a good thing. That's good. When yeah. I, when I go to use that money at sixty five, I, I, I take it out. I'm going to pay tax income tax. And I'm going to pay income tax at whatever the income tax rate is that year. Okay. So if I go to retire, I've got a million dollars in my qualified plan, mm -hmm. my, my, my IRA. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a million dollars. I have a million dollars minus whatever the tax rate is. Wah, wah. Big wet blanket. So if taxes, yeah, are, 10, okay. if taxes are 10%, great. I've got $900,000. If they're 50, then I've got 500,000. <laughs> right. Oh my God. <laughs> well, it's, it's just such a moving target, right? It is a moving target for sure. So what do you take... say? I'm curious because I know like we all hear, you know, you should invest, you should have started investing when you were younger, but like many of us are like in our forties or fifties and we're just now doing this stuff. So like, what do you say to people like that? Like us? Yeah. Yeah. I say that I wish that, that my parents would have started saving when, when I was just a, 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 a thought or an idea right. or I wish I would have been saving, you know, a million dollars a year when I was 10. Yeah. It just is, it just is what it is. Yeah. I mean, yes, True. certainly the, the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The next best time it is, is today. Today. Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. And it can be demotivating for sure to think, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm 50 years old. Can I really save enough over the next 15 years? Well, the answer is yes. Is, is, is you absolutely can and you just need to get started. Yeah, so. and get into reality of what, where are you really at? So like you said, like go through the first steps first, get your thousand dollars saved, get out of debt, get six months saved, and then let's talk. Thousand percent, yeah, yeah, I mean. Can you do business in every state or are you mandated yes. on yep. ones? No, I certainly can. I, I can do business in every state, so. Let me just round out the, uh, the, the Roth IRA comment yeah. or, or a little, little tip there. So yeah. Roth is separate. So the same example, if I'm making 50 grand a year, I put five grand in my Roth. My taxable income for this year is still 50 grand. So I pay tax in the same amount. Okay. Sits inside the Roth IRA, gross tax deferred. When I take the money out, it all comes out tax-free. Why is that? Because the government already got to tax my income. That, that's, that, oh, that's, that's, that that's, makes that's really sense. what they're doing here, right? Okay. Is they're they're going to get a piece of my money at some point. Just when? It, yeah, that, that's exactly right. So if I'm in a position where all my income when I retire could be tax-free, I would rather do that, right? Yeah. Just, just so I don't need to worry about it. Right. So, but, but, but there's no reason that you can't do both. 
because you can okay. have both types of accounts. So you can, as you are trying to figure out your tax situation with your tax professional, you're doing it on your own and you're making 500 grand. You say, okay, here's with the, the standard deduction and then I've got business expenses. And if I put, mm -hmm. you know, 20 grand into my Roth 401k, how is that going to impact my taxes this year? Well, maybe I should do 10,000 pre-tax and mm -hmm. then 10 into a Roth style contribution. So you're, you're, you're able to do both. Um, this year, and, and next year, I've got it written down here because mm -hmm. why would I have something in my mind if I can just look at it as it's written <laughs> down? I, th I think that this year and next year, you can put up to almost $60,000 into a qualified plan. Wow. And that's different. It was like 40 something, wasn't it? Uh, well, see, it's, 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 it's always sort of a bit of a moving target. Um, okay. And, and it usually goes up by 500 or 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 1000 dollars and there's really different kinds. Okay. But fundamentally you can put away a lot of money into these kinds of plans. An IRA you can put $6,000 in. Mhm. Mm uh a, a solo 401k or a 401k you could potentially put up to $60,000 into it. Wow. Okay? So here here is here here is if I can just sort of distill this down into what's most important. Yeah. Um with an IRA, again, you can put $6,000 into it. So you can't put $6,000 into a traditional IRA and then put $6,000 into a Roth IRA. It just doesn't okay. work that way. But you could open up a solo 401k that has both options inside of it. Okay. 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 So with a 401k, if I can just you trade one, every year or like yep, have both yep. options? Okay. Yep. So let's just, we'll use an example that, that if, if I were working at Apple, I, as the employee, could put $19,000 into my 401k at Apple. Okay. And then Apple can make a contribution on my behalf of, um, let's just use the, of 25% of, of my annual income. Okay. Okay. Well, since it's a solo 401k and it's George's company, I can make the contribution of 19000 into my own account. And then I can put 25% of my W-2 income or how, how, how or your your 1099 or whatever mm -hmm. into into my own 401k my own solo 401k as the employer so mm -hmm. i get to i get to contribute as the employee nice. and, and the, the employer. employer okay the employer contribution that i make is always the pre tax that's just oh. how that works okay the employee can be roth or okay. it can be pre tax okay okay so it just gives you a ton of flexibility to put a lot of money into the account. Yeah. And I think that's important too, because as many of us are moving into making our real estate companies like businesses, we are, you know, maybe an LLC and then we're starting to make money and our accountant says, Hey, you should be taxed as an S corp, which means that we have to pay ourselves, which is where this would, could come into play. Mm -hmm. Cause then you yep. can contribute a lot more. You actually don't even need to be incorporated at, at all. You could wow. just be a sole proprietor to do this. Okay. You just have to have, you just have to have self-employed income. Nice. Wow. That is it. That's so, great. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of rules. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. There, 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 there are a ton. Um, the, the, the other kind of accounts, which are really common are called a SEP IRA. Mm -hmm. I've heard of and that. Then, and, and, and then the simple IRA. And what, what's, what's more appealing about those two accounts is that, they're almost free to set up and there's very low, uh, there's very low administration. Okay? okay. With a SEP IRA, um, it's essentially, you can just make the 25% of your taxable income contribution. Okay. And it's always going to be pre-tax. Okay. Okay. So if you're making a hundred grand, you could probably put in 25 grand mm -hmm. and it's going to be tax deductible this, gross, this year. It's based off gross income, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, Cause you know, um, net, we just, we want the lowest. Right. Zero. <laughs> yeah. Negative. negative. <laughs> right. So, so, so with the SEP, you're not able to take advantage of, of the Roth style contribution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how that works. And, and you're not able to make the contribution as the employee and the employer. Okay. Got it. It's just, it's just an employer style contribution. Okay. Um, and then a simple IRA, um, Essentially, you can only put in, you can put in $13,500 a year, which okay. is a lot of money. Yeah, it's a and lot. Then a three, and then a 3% match. So okay. you put in 13000 as the employee, mm -hmm. and then as, as, as the employer, you can put in 3%. Okay. 
Okay. Again, that that's also only going to be the pre-tax, um, not not the Roth style contribution. But yeah. those are those are great options. So if you're just looking to reduce taxable income and pe- and, and put money away, those are awesome. Yeah. The solo 401k, give or take, it's not perfect because there's all these different providers. It's going to cost probably $500 to set the plan up because you need to create what's called a plan document. Okay. It is an, ERI, an, an ERISA plan, which just means that even though it's me, it's still viewed as an employer-employee relationship. Oh, so there's just got different it. people that, 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 that sort of govern it. Okay. okay. Before I forget, uh, you can also contribute for a spouse into the solo 401k. Which okay. Is, which is, which is also pretty cool. And you can do it on their behalf. So nice. you can put, you can put a ton of money, a ton of money in, um, into those accounts. So that's good. And I think if I was going to like kind of round out our conversation, because as realtors, not many of us are really, once we start talking about math, it just gets <laughs> real hazy you know? So I think like, based on what you said, number one, let's get that financial security. Let's get the floor, basically get out of debt, get that six months, then let's take a look. So then call, I would say call you. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, for sure. Um, just probably email is, is, is normally best. Okay. And I'm at, I'm at George at moneyalignmentacademy.com. It's cool. I like it. Um, okay. So then reach out to you and then, because each of our businesses and lifestyle, like everything's a little bit different. So reach out to you and say, okay, what do we think is the best way here for me to maximize based on my age, when I want to retire, how much money I need to have, things like that. Right. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Everybody's a little bit unique. So, um, money alignment Academy, it's, 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 it's a whole educational platform. So you go to moneyalignmentacademy.com uh-huh. and, and I've, I've got a bunch of courses on there oh, courses fun. that are confusingly titled, get out of debt, saving and investing, retire <laughs> happily. So you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're, they're, they're inexpensive, but I also created a code. If anybody's interested in taking one of those, you can enter Mertland and you'll get 20% off. So Nice. I like it. Yes, <laughs> definitely do that. Um, cool. Well, I really appreciate you being on. Can you tell us um, quickly about the podcast and what it's about too? Yeah, hundred percent. So the podcast is called Money Savage. And mm-hmm. I fundamentally, I, I'm trying to help people get better at money. So yeah, they can live, great. I, 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 I can live so that they can live the lives that they want. Yes. Um, so we're doing the show seven days a week now and we bring on experts like you, Jen, we bring on financial advisors. We bring on really folks in every aspect of money, but also just, just personal development and success. I, I mm-hmm. call it a human flourishing podcast at this point. So there's a <laughs> lot of mindset stuff. There's really tactical uh, stuff about real estate and, and about investing and you name it. And it's 20 minutes. So they're pretty short, short segments nice. and, and it's super fun and funny. It was and, fun and, to be on yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being on this. It was really helpful. I think, you know, for, for me, it's like investing is something, if it's not automatic, you kind of like lose sight of it. So it's good to keep bringing it back because at some point we are going to wake up and be like, you know what? I'm done. And it would be nice to actually be able to be done. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the more that you can automate everything and, and take your hands off the yeah. wheel, hundred percent, the better. So you think, I think you hit the nail on the head yeah. there and, and yeah, with all these accounts, just kind of set it and forget it. And yeah, um, for sure. And I'm happy to answer questions about what people should be invested in and all that stuff. If, if they're curious or confused because it is confusing. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely put your contact information. Um, either in the comments or if they're watching it on YouTube, like in the notes part of the new YouTube. Awesome. Great. Well, I appreciate you being on. Thanks a lot, George. Thank you for having me. See ya. All right, cool. Let's see.